Decision Plus has been and still is a leading stock market service provider. From training to coaching, we cover it all. Try both our software as well as our coaching site completely free for 10 days without obligation. No credit card is needed to sign up for the trial. The trial subscription will be automatically canceled for you at the end. DecisionPlus.com, your stock market service center. Real-time coaching has been created. We search and classify critical reports and technical movements. You can visualize or hear the best buying and selling opportunity. Get real-time advice all day long and three live coaching shows per day. Let us do the work and save your time for trading. Try MarketGurus.tv free without obligation for 10 days in the menus above. Market Vision Plus is the trading companion of so many investors. Make your fundamental and technical analysis easy with Canada's number one stock market decision making software. Research, decide, and follow your positions with Market Vision Plus. See the menus just above this program and try Market Vision Plus for 10 days without any obligation after the show. When it comes to day trading, Trader Plus is the right tool. Track 50 quotes simultaneously. Create dozens of quick lists. Display as many as 30 real-time intraday charts at the same time. Watch the action with candlesticks or bar charts as fast as 10 seconds. See the market by sectors. Use the chart models already prepared for you. Try Trader Plus for 10 days in the menu above without any obligation. Hello everybody, welcome to the Swing Trading Show. Today we're Friday, May 1st, 2015, and the question bar is open, folks. If ever you have any questions, feel free to ask them today. It will be my pleasure to answer them. It's going to be a sunny weekend today, so I hope all of you uh, will be actually able to enjoy this weekend as well. So, taking a look at the market situation today, folks, yesterday we had a slight sell-off on the markets, uh, and right now we're having a, some kind of a rebound where we're resuming most of the points that we lost yesterday on the market you see the situation here in the nasdaq where uh, this 50-day moving average is a point where investors today are reluctant to let the index go further down uh, same thing on the dow jones which has rebounded on its 100-day uh, moving average and also on the tsx that actually rebounded on its 30-day uh, and 50-day moving average and orange so with this situation though on the tsx though uh what are we what should we do well, it's, I would say that definitely it's a tough market. One particular sector that is standing out, or the sectors that are standing out, are first of all, aluminum, a couple of steel stocks, a couple of uh, mining stocks also as well. If we take a look at the mining sector on the Canadian side, it is today the best performer. However, should you open some positions today in the mining sector, look at this, one day, two day, four, five days of rally, unstoppable on the mining sector there. Even if we're going slightly higher, though, we still have the average volume that's still below. So which is a clear signal that this situation in the mining sector is more ideal to take some profit in your positions or to day trade. And the, our best day trade of the day is going to be in the mining sector today on the TSX. We have some stocks like London that are pursuing the rally. Let's say you bought lending at 525 on the breakout here. Well, you're in a clear situation to take some profit. If you have already done so, good job. Hold on to your positions. But if you have not, do it. It's important. Share it as well. You say you bought that stock on the breakout around here on 217. You're in a clear situation to take some profit, especially with Sherry that is testing its resistance. Tech resources, well, the, the entry point was kind of tough. And first quantum, so far, first quantum, it's still a stock that continues to perform really, really well. Really first quantum I I kind of love the technical pattern. Oh, I kind of love the technical pattern on a stock like that here. And if we take a look at this right now, first quantum has reached its resistance there of $20. So it's not a point to buy first quantum, but 
it's mostly a point for profit taking on first quantum what we did yesterday is that yesterday on this correction that we had on the market on market gurus that tv that you can have access for free for 10 days uh, we actually have recommended some bearish etf and the two bearish etf that we have recommended on market gurus that tv and our analyst charts portfolio have been hxd and spxu today with the correction we're continuing to hold on to those bearish etf because we don't think that this simple slight rebound is enough to say that okay sh we should close those bearish etf it's still fragile so this is why one of you is asking me m is asking me is it time to buy spxu or uvxy well i cannot say that it's time to buy spxu right now the thing is we bought it yesterday i think you could actually consider spxu as a way to just build up your positions if you're buying it today m spxu well your exit point is not that far is around 3320 right so you have a small loss potential on spxu if you're buying it today i would go in with a half position on spxu before buying the uvxy I think I'd prefer to buy SPXU instead of UVXY. Well, it all depends. The, both will be almost, almost, almost the same. Not the same, but almost the same. As for the situation on the SPY, because this is what you should look at, the situation on the SPY so far, I, does UVXY and SPXU will pay off if we could have the SPY that could go below 207.50. Right now, we see we have a lot of congestions. We still have the 100-day moving average there. That's around 207.5 points. So if we do go below 207.5 points, now the next target becomes around 202 points. So this is why we're still above the 100-day moving average. It's not a moment to open a full positions on SPXU. It's a moment to maybe build it up by a half positions. And if we have a clear break below 207.5, then it could definitely pay off well. And your next target will be 202 points on the SPY. So is it time to buy SPXU or EVXY? I would say gradually going with some half positions, but do not go full blast buying a full positions on SPXU because markets are nervous, yes, they're volatile, yes, but we cannot say that we have a clear bearish momentum because there are not a lot of sectors in the bearish cycle, neither in the US, neither on the Canadian side. So let's take a look here. Do we have some uh, breakouts there? Well, we do have some breakouts in NASDAQ here. We have, for instance, Jurex, which is a few, one of the fewest breakouts there on the NASDAQ. Um, Jurex, it remains neutral. Uh, I think I would, slide, I would be patient. I'd see if during the day we can have this stock that maintains this neutral range intraday. If I see a new low below 209 on that stock for me, that would not be a credible breakout. Uh, forget NVIDIA, it's it lost its momentum. China recycling timidly is breaking that resistance, really timidly. So what I would do, when I have a stock that's breaking out, that's timidly breaking out, what I do usually is like I take a look at the intraday chart, see how the stock is behaving. If I see that today that the stock lose all of its gains of the day, for me that would not be a credible breakout on a stock like CREG. So CREG, watch that to see if ever it can maintain its gains intraday. Alcoa, as told you, aluminum stocks, couple of mining stocks remain active and Alcoa is one of the uh, best breakout in the sector. If we take a look at Alcoa situation, nice performance though, but we're reluctant to recommend Alcoa among our analyst choice because what I see on Alcoa is a confirmation of a possible bearish divergence. Why? Because look at this here. The top was over here, we're around this area. This top here, we're around this area in the stochastic. So we continue to make a lower bottom on the stochastics and this one here we're higher than the former two tops and the stochastics is still uh, lower however to confirm a top uh, we, uh, we need to have the stochastics heading down so yes it's positive is going up but this could explain uh, I think traders are seeing that and this is why we could explain why Alcoa is still staying neutral in its intraday chart so for me Alcoa even if it's a nice breakout uh, I'd like to see intraday if it can maintain those gains and slightly go slightly back up to confirm the strength of the bullish momentum. If it does for Alcoa, well, then we have some potential on that stock until what? 1442, 1493 as your next target. 1442, 1493 for Alcoa by putting a Fibonacci retracement. Uh, elsewhere, we have American International Holding. That's actually a stock that has been responsible to bring the financial sector into a neutral cycle in the US. So if you're getting into that stock, exit point is clear. You see you trace the upward trend by connecting a lot of the bottoms. So $56 becomes your exit point. 
uh, air cap holding yes nice entry point there $46 as an exit point and enter for forget it so first quantum as I said but first quantum I see $20 I see as a target for that stock I think it's not an ideal timing to get in except if you're buying it today and you're willing to tolerate a correction but I don't think it's appropriate to do so but it's one of the few breakouts that we have in the mining sector today now there's one question from Dan Dan is it time to buy IT um, entertain group um, look once this is one, one technique I'm going to give you Dan um, this is a stock that this is a good thing with that stock thing just by looking at it with no indicators the good thing is that it's stabilizing at an important support right so which is something that's good so this support is seems to be solid now what you could do is see if ever under this sideways formation do we have volumes that are increasing so with the market vision software what I would like to you what you could do is that take click on the right button click analysis add the volume on balance so you have the volume on balance here right you add it in the lower region there and do we have volumes that are increasing you see it's not clear so the volume so far not that clear so if we had let's say a volume on balance that was tilting really higher within this other information I would feel more comfortable to get it into a stock like that so the volume and balance is not clear so we do not have an increase in volume within this other information which means that the probability that we might go up and explode impressively on the upside is not that great now let's take a look at some other indicators histogram MACD is okay right but we're not yet tilting towards the overbought situation moving average a lot of congestion there so this explains why investors are reluctant to buy that stock a lot within this other information I think $16 will be to go on a stock like that but right now by looking at how the volume on balance is right which is totally flat not showing a lot of increase in volume within this other information by seeing all those moving average that are stuck there 50 30 10 day moving average around $16 and by seeing that the MACD is not yet heading towards uh, the positive territory or heading towards the overbought situation for me I won't say that today entertain group is a buy I think you rather wait for a clearer signal before getting in into a stock like that find answers to your questions by emailing your host at btm at decisionplus.com five good reasons to manage your investments with national bank direct brokerage Commission fees fixed at $9.95 anytime for all clients and starting at only $6.95 for active investors. No administrative fees if you hold at least $20,000 in your accounts. Registered accounts available in U.S. currency. Powerful tools to help you manage your portfolio. Award-winning customer service and satisfaction levels amongst the highest in the industry. To learn more, visit nbdb.ca or call us now. Real-time coaching has been created. We search and classify critical reports and technical movements. You can visualize or hear the best buying and selling opportunities. Get real-time advice all day long and three live coaching shows per day. Let us do the work and save your time for trading. Try MarketGurus.tv free without obligation for 10 days in the menus above. Welcome back, folks. So we have one question here from Paul, an interesting one here. Hi, Chris. Technical question. Is a, stochastics moment, is a stochastic momentum indicator a great tool for bottom fishing and profit taking using plus 40, minus 40? And thank you so much for your advice and your good job. Well, Paul, yes, it is a momentum indicator. Is it a great tool for bottom fishing? It is one of many tools that you could use. I don't think you can only rely on one indicator solely to determine if a stock is a clear bottom fishing or not. I give you an example here. On that stock, PRW on the TSX, the stochastics did confirm a clear opportunity for bottom fishing. Why? Because look, we went lower here, right? Then the stochastics here was there. And on that one here, the stochastics edge higher. So we have a clear higher bottom on the stochastics. That confirms the strength of the buyer's momentum it's around the 40%, which is also something that confirms that the borrower momentum is credible on a stock like that. So on that stock, PRW, yes, the stochastics was kind of uh, great to do so, but 
as I said, you cannot only rely on it. The thing I would also advise you to take a look at is, take a look at the MACD histogram. Uh, it can give you definitely a clearer example of that. So the good thing is that on that stock, even if we were low, we still had the histogram that was not in negative territory. It, it remained within positive territory and we slightly edge higher here. So that's also something that you can take a look at to complete your analysis with the stochastics. Another stock is like Arsenal Energy. Now let's take a look at the stochastics here. Stochastics oversold. We're not yet towards the 30-40% range but the stock is having an intraday rebound. But take a look at the MACD here, the histogram, I mean. The histogram is still in negative territory and continuing to edge down. So we cannot say that because you take a look at the stochastics that's oversold that, okay, let me buy that stock, it's a bottom fishing. Because the histogram is showing you a totally different scenario where the histogram is continuing to be a negative territory and continuing to go down. So that confirms the strength of the bearish momentum on Arsenal Energy. So as, as I said, yes, stochastics is good, but complete your analysis with a MACD histogram. 7.28.7 is usually the one that we use here on MarketGurus.tv. Now, AVL, 32 cents. Uh, 32 cents, a good deal. Uh, no, I cannot say it's a good deal at 32 cents. Um, look, uh, so far... Uh, this upward trend, though, is still too fragile. There's another support that's there at 29 cents because this is a more credible support, right? Yes, at 32 cents, this is a confirmation of an upward trend, but at 30, 29 cents, this is a more solid support that has been tested many times and where we rebounded. So I cannot say that it's solid. I think we are forming right now the beginning of a sideways formation on that stock. So for me, I would not feel comfortable to uh, get in yet into a stock like that histogram still in negative territory we're not yet hedging towards positive territory so for me there's still a risk that the stock might go down stochastics oversold but not yet tilting towards the overbought situation because we're not yet in the 40 percent range so for me for those reasons avl is not a good deal because of the stochastics that's not yet showing a buyer's momentum because this upward trend there we cannot say that it's a credible bottom there's still a support that's more solid at 29 cents. So there's a risk that you might lose more money if you buy a stock at those positions. And the histogram so far is still negative. Now, I'm tempted to buy Acon Group. If it goes above 13.50, volume is very weak. Uh, what do you think, Chris? Well, it's, it will be a great buy, higher than 13.50. Really, I have nothing to say. I think today the stock uh, just uh, got a contract from uh, in Manitoba, I think. Um, so yes, um, 1350 is a, is a great thing. Volumes are weak, yes, I agree. However, I think the, the, the only thing that I kind of don't like with a stock like that is that um, for me, it has not really stabilized enough, right? Um, there's another uh, target at 1484. So let's put, let's say, uh, it's overbought on a yearly basis with the stochastics. So this is the thing I kind of don't like with a stock like that. So this is why I think it's good that you put your buying price around 1350, which will correspond higher to that top there. Now let's see if we don't have a, a bearish divergence. So one thing you should do is to take a look at the MACD. And yes, if we go above 1350, we will have a bearish divergence. Why? Because look, this top here, we are here. So if we go higher than 1350, which will be higher than that top, and the MACD histogram is still below that one here, that is a bearish divergence because normally to have a stock that can pursue its rally or its breakout, we don't need to have this divergence. We need to see at least the histogram continuing to go higher and higher as long as the stock goes higher. So if the stock reaches 1350, which will be higher than this top here of April 17, the histogram will, not, will have need to be higher to confirm the strength of this breakout. But because the histogram so far is still negative, because we still have a stock that's overbought on a yearly basis, look at here, the stochastics overbought totally. For me, I think I'll remain slightly patient. The weak volume is a uh, red flag that you signal that was also a great thing. So I'll be patient on a stock like Aiken Group. I'll watch it. I think even if it does break out at 1350, maybe you could wait for the stock to slightly correct and get it. Uh, at the cheaper price on that stock. And if it does, let's say it goes up, goes slightly back down, you could buy it if ever you see the stock retesting its upward trend 
and then your next target now becomes around 1475. So to make a summary, yes, it would be a good buy. However, there are some lot of red flags, the ones that you mentioned, the volume. Second of all, the fact that we do have a bearish divergence with the histogram, right? Because the top here will be lower than this one here. And also the fact that on a yearly basis, the stock is totally overbought. So this, those are all the red flags that you have on a stock like that. As for the best day trade of the day, it's a stock in the mining sector. It's Hud Bay Mineral. That's our best day trade of the day for today. And Hud Bay has been uh, increased by 4.53%. It was not as big, as explosive as some stocks on the NASDAQ, but the entry points were kind of clear. And that this is what we loved with, some st with a stock like that. One here, one there, one there. So four entry points on a stock like Hud Bay Minerals. Overall, folks, if you do have some positions in the resources sector, be willing to take some profits on them whenever you can. On our analyst search portfolio and market gurus at TV, there are some stocks that we have done so today, and especially in the mining sector, which is one of the strongest sector today. If you are already taking some profit, it's a good job. But if you have not done so, I think it's good for today to at least take some profit on some positions. Not a lot of breakouts. Markets are tough. Markets are volatile. However, I think you should definitely continue to remain disciplined by whenever you can, put some money on your pocket. So I wish you all a great weekend, and I wish you all also a good trading.